10 or 15 yeah. By the way, ago. I love Grok. Guess where? Guess I'll use Grok. Uh, the Grok app. Is that right? I, uh, on my computer, I have to use the web page. Uh, but please, a Grok map, Mac app. And on my phone, I use it. I use I use the Grok app on my phone. Uh, on my phone, phone, phone <laughs> made by Apple. Okay. Yes. Well. Um... Speaking of phones, Michael says, last week a listener wrote in a couple follow weeks to last week's episode. Last week, a listener wrote in about ChatGPT being the wrong UI, and it felt like Ben might have disagreed. I wouldn't dare mischaracterize Ben's take. It's <laughs> a dangerous See, game for any listener. <laughs> it's always – I enjoy poking the listeners on it. The, the worry is uh, you go too far, and now people are scared. Uh, no, on it's part, it's, it's, that's right. It's inbox. part of the game. It's part of the game. <laughs> You guys didn't really dig in, though, so here's my take. ChatGPT has limitations. Organizing past chats is a disaster. Learning is inconsistent. And sometimes it feels like training a golden retriever with short-term memory loss. But despite all that, the chat interface is the UI of today. If we're going to talk about the wrong UI, let's start with cell phones. We communicate with the entire planet at a snail's pace using two thumbs like cavemen discovering fire and yet somehow that's a multi-trillion dollar success story. Right now, the chatbot UI is the only UX that actually fits the moment we're in. It's likely not the end, it's likely not the end game, but it works today. Ben's absolutely correct that ChatGPT has captured the market, and if OpenAI makes the right moves, they could be legendary. If they don't, well, hello, MySpace. Um, I thought that was a good take on the UI of today, and that's a bull case for Apple, too. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a great take. And Michael, you had me right. You should have leaned into it. Yeah. <laughs> chat, guess what people do on their phones all day, every day? In chat. Text, text yes. message. Yes. they People like the asynchronous nature. They don't like talking out loud. There is a bit here, this is a classic tech failure case, where they – Imagine problems that are completely, they don't actually look at consumers and how they actually live their lives, <laughs> which is they're texting all the time. We which talk, who talks so on their phone? Time on their phone all day long. Most of that time is in the company of other humans where voice activated AI would actually be like Annoying. unbelievably rude. <laughs> yes. You can't do it that way. And so text will have a place no matter what. Do you know how I conduct, how I do phone calls? I text uh, no. someone and say, is it okay if I call you right now? I know. You don't just call someone. <laughs> it's a what really are sad you, reflection a boomer? of modern affairs. Yeah. Uh, I do the no, same but, thing, and I'm always no, so, a little ashamed. But I'm glad Michael is. brought this up because it's a point we should have made before, which is for all the kvetching about chatbots, they are actually perfectly attuned to how people actually use their computers these days. And I, I don't use voice mode with this stuff at all. Again, I don't want to over-index on myself. I am also the world's like most hardcore text messaging. Uh, so, uh, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I, you know what I, I have, I've talked about my multi screen display and I've had to rejigger it because I have all my chat apps and one of my chat apps is AI where I talk to the AI and I get information and that's fine. Is that, is that in a micro sense inefficient to be type 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 and read 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 yeah it is but guess what that's that, like that's how people actually operate and, and there i can't remember there was someone that, that that had sort of this conversation um i think we were in a group like when you're talking in an ai you can be thoughtful you can think about what you're typing like it's actually kind of nerve-wracking to talk to this because like oh what if i say it wrong and then, and then you're like ah oh, but wait no stop uh. like in ideally an ai gets to the point where it's like an in-person conversation you're bouncing back and forth but it's not there maybe it will never be there and yeah me and michael let's let, let's let's set up a cabin here on on chatbot mountain or chatbot <laughs> island uh let's build a resort I will not be visiting chatbot island with you and michael but it's true that ultimately like the threat to a company like apple is a new form factor that's not a cell phone that becomes the device you're interacting with all day um but it's going to be hard to beat text input and you probably have to beat text input to become that new form factor that people are wearing all day whether it's glasses or whatever else uh, airpod um and so uh, i think it's a worthy counterpoint michael thank you for writing in and bill also following up to last week's discussion 
says on dithering describing how much it seems like amazon and apple feel like they missed the chat gpt moment and need to catch up i'm paraphrasing here but ben argued to john that amazon doesn't need to ship something amazing they can just ship something pretty basic and it's fine i totally get where ben is coming from as an alexa user and agree with him once you get how to do alexa speak it works very well and anytime it does it is just user error it, it ha if it has that fidelity with natural language capabilities, that would be awesome. But from an Amazon standpoint, it looks like the status quo is not tenable. Per the Wall Street Journal, Alexa has lost a ton of money, approximately $25 billion over four years per the article. Yeah, who's counting? In my opinion, <laughs> this is a scenario where Amazon actually did have to make a big, bold bet and hope it works out. They own the home now, but it seems like a real money loser, and maybe the current path they were on didn't have a light at the end of the tunnel. This bet may be their best chance to turn that around. Any thoughts? I, uh, the scale of losses with the Alexa decision is something that I had forgotten and should have mentioned when we were discussing Alexa Plus last week. It's a fair bit of, bit of pushback, but it's also completely irrelevant which mm -hmm. companies get in even more trouble when they start making product decisions based on their internal needs as opposed to market market realities and, and so we've dropped and 25 produce. billion dollars on this we have to rescue it is an excellent recipe for throwing good money after Another bad 25 billion <laughs> yeah that Th that's right like it, what might be happening yeah and, and more importantly again i i it's always you hate to dump on Alexa Plus because it hasn't shipped yet. Then again, you regret insufficiently dumping on Apple Intelligence was mm. hadn't shipped yet. So guess what? We're we're going all in. Uh, <laughs> What's you know how that? you you know how you get to those amazing demos and scenarios that they show with Alexa Plus. Mm. You ship one that is basic and works, and then you Incremental. iterate and you add yeah. to it. And a mistake companies make this was microsoft back in the 2000s they would put on these legendary ces keynotes bill gates would get on stage and show all this fantastical stuff that was completely disassociated from a company that was stuck in the mud and not going anywhere that was watching the, 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 what, what what was the color of the mud brown like the poop mp3 player they watched i can't remember the name of it what, what was the, what was the microsoft mp3 the player the Zune, yes, the poop Zune. The poop yep. Zune symbolized the mud that Microsoft was stuck in, in the 2000s. They were putting on these fantastical CES presentations about technologies that, that, that did not exist and ultimately would not exist. Companies that are stuck fall in love with the keynote. And I think that's what happened with Amazon. It's definitely in retrospect what happened with Apple and Apple intelligence. And just because, again, the good money after bad lure in these situations is pretty it's a very powerful one and it certainly seems like the most likely explanation for what's going on with alexa plus but we do reserve the right to be amazed if and when alexa plus materializes and is publicly available you know who knows when that will be but um i'm enjoying the urban legend surrounding alexa what plus what, what is go time. what's going well for amazon in ai is actually an interesting analogy here they they've spent apparently a ton of money building their own model and apparently they stink and they keep mm -hmm. stinking and they keep having to do it again and yet they're doing well in their business because they've created bedrock they were very early on the we're going to make a managed platform so you can trivially use ai with your stuff that's already hosted on aws not using their own models they have a partnership with anthropic uh which is which has been great but they also have all the open source models and they built a platform that lets you leverage other models with your data. All of this leans into what Amazon does well, what AWS is qualified to do. They don't need to have their their uh, their own amazing model. And I would I would argue the this the intelligence with which they and they are focused on training them in their own chips. But again, that's a reasonable thing for an infrastructure company to do that has experience doing their own chips and, and their own networking. That's a great thing to invest in. They're not trying to build a fully integrated enterprise application for the world. And, and to the extent they've tried to do that, they've had to bail like their chime video conference thing. Have you ever used it, done it, had a chime call? 
Never even heard of it. No. Uh, I did have a chime call. I think obviously with the senior Amazon executive because they're the <laughs> only ones that would insist on doing it. And now it's dead. Uh, so yeah, like companies should do what they're good at. Yeah. And uh, in Alexa, maybe I liked Alexa. I like the concept. I've always been a fan from the beginning. If you want to push back on me, it's like, yeah, you felt too much in love with the concept. And the reality was you've been encouraging a business that is setting money on fire. And maybe it never made sense for them uh, all along. Maybe it actually was more like the Fire Phone, despite my being proud of being the only one when it launched. I know oh, this is very different than the Fire Phone. It's actually an opportunity. They should build it. Maybe it was the same as 